Hello and welcome to the Ben and Boz Microsoft Excel video tutorial series. I'm here with Ben and you've already heard Boz, but we're going to be walking you through a bunch of different Excel skills and this video is just our first one. That's kind of an exciting moment for us. Long time, long time coming. Groundbreaking, you could say. We could. So the goals of this uh, little first video here is that we're just assuming you don't know anything about Excel. So we're just going to take you through the introductory features of Excel. And the focus of this one is really with the basic mathematical features. And so if you want a more detailed description, you can look down below. Um, we always say here are the actions that we're going to learn. And then we have a series of shortcuts. So we'll be using a PC while we do these videos, but in case you have a Mac and you're keeping along with us at home, you can see the shortcuts as well right next to it. Sounds good. I think we're ready. We'll hop into it now. Uh, on our first exercise here, what we have is a lot of information that we pre-prepared for a balance sheet and an income statement with the totals not present. So we're basically going to go through how do you would put totals in this video. So the first one here, it's Ben and Boz Inc. and the balance sheet for December 31st, 2018. They have four assets, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and equipment. And we just wanna sum those up together. So Ben, can you, how would you sum those up? What would be the quickest way for you right now? So right now what I'm gonna do to get total assets is hit the equals sign. That's kinda like turning on your calculator. You might think of it that way. And then I'm gonna go up just using the arrow keys, arrow on up to cash. So right up there at 1,000. And then I want to add accounts receivable to that. So I'm gonna hit the plus key, shift and equals at the same time. Um, arrow up to accounts receivable, hit the plus key, arrow up to inventory, and then one more time up to equipment. So if I add those four together, you can see, boom, I get to $29,000. And a benefit of that, you pain me a little bit. We'll talk about that in a second. But a we'll benefit that. of that is compared to just hard keying in the twenty nine thousand is that now if you change cash to fifteen hundred bucks as an example, the total assets will sum up. So let's change the cash back. How are you going to change the cash back here, Ben? Well, the last change I made was to go from one thousand to fifteen hundred. So I'm going to hit Control Z, which is going to undo the last action that I had. So if I hit Control Z or Command Z, if you're on a Mac. And you see cash changes to 1000 Yeah. If I wanted to go back to 1500 I would just hit Control-Y or Command-Y, and it goes back up to 1500 I use I use Control-Z a lot. I don't use you know come uh, Control-Y a lot once in a while, but uh, so with Control-Z yeah. a lot. Control-Z big time. Boz especially makes a few mistakes. So. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, so anyway, uh, the, the total assets, what Ben did there was fine. And if I just had a couple... Uh, to add together, I would maybe do that, but the most efficient way to do that is to use the auto sum feature. The um, one way that, that people learn of that auto sum feature is just to go up on the right side of the of the screen and just click auto sum. So you can see my mouse is over auto sum right now. You click it, you hit enter, and that's quick and it works, but there's even one better thing than that, isn't there? Yeah, see the thing is, anytime you have to remove your hands from the keyboard and use the mouse to go anywhere, it slows you down and you want to avoid that as much as possible. So what we can do is, in this cell, delete the 29,000. I can hit the Alt and the Equals sign together at the same time. Alt equals, it's just an auto sum for me. It's a shortcut, it's much faster, and then you don't even have to add everything up individually. Absolutely. You know, and, and before we go any further, Ben, uh, let's go ahead and save this document, all right, because we're starting to work in this one. So how would you yeah, normally yeah. save? Just uh, well, there's a little save thing in the upper left-hand part of the screen, right above file. You could just click it, right? Even just above file, is that a little save button? Yeah, but not everyone at home would be having that necessarily. Okay. So I'm just going to click the file and then hit save as. And there we go. I can save it anywhere I want. Now, in this case, there is a shortcut method. I feel like Boz. I think you know this one. I, you know, I learned this one a good twenty years ago, probably. Uh, was it Excel around twenty years ago? Uh, Lotus was the predecessor. I don't. I think I was using Lotus back then. So, but anyway, Control S, Ben. <laughs> control is what we're... S. Thank you. Getting back on task. Nice. And so you can see now, if I click Browse, it just takes me to all my documents that I have. I'm just going to save this one as we call it the solution. I mean, we're not done yet, but... Yeah, lesson one solution, solution, maybe. Yeah, lesson one solution. Just type it right in, hit enter for save. And now anytime we wanna save it down the road, 
all we have to do is hit control S and it automatically saves for us. Yeah, sounds good. A lot of you probably know that from other Microsoft products, but if this is your first time using them, now you know. Now you know. So liability to stockholders equity should be pretty easy, right? It's pretty much just the same thing. We've got two liabilities and two uh, items of stockholders equity, and, and we totaled all those up. So just to total them up, let's not let's not hard key it. Let's not add it. Let's not click on the auto sum. Let's do it the fastest way that we learned. All I'm hitting right now is alt equals, and there you go. It's Excel is smart enough to know what I want to add up. You hit enter, and we're good to go. Absolutely. So, do, um, do they need calculators anymore? I think you can more or less throw your calculator away. Get rid but of it. You don't need it anymore. You got you get, Excel. You got it. Well, they think of calculators as their iPhone or something like that, right? Keep maybe, that on there for quick reference, but nothing. You don't need like one of those complex calculators. Maybe keep your iPhone. Don't keep get your rid of iPhone. That. That's right. But why don't you start them on the income statement there? Sure. Just so you know, we're not sponsored by Apple. Um, so on our income statement, we start with revenue and we have cost of goods sold. So we want to get our gross margin and we have to take revenues and subtract cost of goods sold out of that. So in order to do that, just like any formula, I'm going to start with the equals button. Then I'm going to arrow up to revenue and hit subtract and then arrow up to cost of goods sold for 33. Can you do one thing for me here, Ben? Delete that one for a second. Now, do that one again, but pretend like you had done revenue plus cost of goods sold. And sure. then you started to get kind of nervous about how to fix it. Oh, revenue plus, and I, I don't know what to do at this point. Yep. So I have a couple options, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to go one way, I could just hit the backspace or delete key until I delete the plus and change it to a minus. Mm -hmm. Or if I still have that plus and I'm really panicking here, just kind of stressed out. Long formula maybe, right? Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. want to mess anything up. I'm afraid I changed something that was already good. I can just hit the escape key and it takes me right back to where I was before. Kind of like reset. Just like a reset. Throw your hands up. It eliminates anything you had done. You just hit escape and it goes back to where you were. Take a deep breath. Move on. Whew. Nice. We're going to be okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Operated income. Go to it. <laughs> All right. Let me make sure this formula is good. So operating income then, we're going to hit the equal sign to get started, arrow up to gross margin, then subtract administration of expenses, subtract selling expenses, and operating income comes out to 13000 I think that's how I do that one. Yeah, it's nice. You can do a series of additions, series of subtractions. I could do plus 9000 minus 5000 anything you want. You just add in the function that you want and use the arrow keys to select yourself. Beautiful. You want me to cover the tax part because I'm kind of the tax guy between us? Yeah, so Boz was a tax pro, probably still is a tax pro, but he's got, what, two decades? 40? How old are you anyway? I'm, I'm 45. How so old are you? So he's got about 40 years of tax experience. 40 years. Started doing them when I was five. That's how much of an expert he is. Ben is 29. He's a former student of mine that has gained confidence and cockiness since I had him in the classroom seven years ago. So back to tax expense. <laughs> anyway. Then. We're going to start with operating income. Yeah. And we're going to multiply by the tax rate. Yep. So then, so what Ben just kind of did there equals arrowed up to the operating income, multiplied by arrowed down to the tax rate, and now hit enter. And why you want to do something like that is, is the U.S. they as part of tax reform they lowered the tax rate from thirty five percent to twenty one percent. So let's say you just wanted to see what sort of impact that that change had. So you could go down to the tax rate right now and type in thirty five percent. You can see, go ahead and enter, and you can see this company used to pay $4,550 of taxes, but now, because of the tax reform, bring back the 21%. I'm just going to hit Control z to bring Ooh. back that 21%. Way to apply what we're teaching. And now you can see the tax is only 2730 But All right, go ahead and finish off the So schedule. that's probably why we don't want to hard key anything in there. Yeah, absolutely not. So Lose flexibility in the spreadsheet. Absolutely. All right, so our last step on this one then to figure out our net income take our operating income, subtract our taxes, and that gives us 10270 Looks good. Should we go back to the instructions and see if we covered everything we hope to? I think we did, but let's just make sure. All right. The goals. Did we understand introductory features, and did we apply basic mathematical functions? Yes, we did. Good work, Equal ben. sign, plus, minus, all of that. I Escape key, it. auto sum, control S, control Y, control Z. I think we've got it. I um, think we should probably save before we sign off, don't you? Save it one more time, a little control S. Control S, it's saved. I think that's a wrap for lesson one. Ben and Boz signing off.